Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles, and back to the World Puzzle Federation, where this is the first puzzle in the World Puzzle Federation 2016 round four. Um, and these were puzzles all created by a single puzzle creator from Russia, which is Andrei Bogdanov. Um, and of course, yeah, these puzzles were created in 2016. I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to be releasing this set, but they're nearly 10 years old. Um, and I want to go through a couple of admin things first. Of course, in the beginning of all of these, um, uh, I will say that you'll be able to find a link to this puzzle below, as well as a link to the entire World Puzzle Federation archive where they've published every puzzle that they've published from 2014 through to whenever this is out I'm assuming unless they stop um, but also the way the point system works, because all of these puzzles have been rated with a point value. Um, so this is the video where I want to quickly go through and say how that works. So each, all of the puzzles in the um, this particular series will combined be rated as worth 600 points. And in the competition that this was, the goal was to solve as many of the puzzles as you could and get as many points as you could. If you could submit all of the answers in less than the 90 minutes you were given, you would get more points based on how men, how fast you were. So first of all, congratulations to Tiet Vunk, um, who came in first and got um, basically 10.5 points a, um, per minute. So 10.5 points a minute was all that was required, or what was required to come first. There were 27 people who completed all of the puzzles and got the 600 points or more because they completed them, whoever completed them faster, which required getting 6.66666 points per minute. If you got over six and two thirds points per minute, then you were in the top 27 people because that was enough to complete all of the puzzles. Only 50 people or in the top 50 people, they completed, got 450 points, which was five points a minute. So only 50 people who competed got more than five points a minute. So if that's basically the breakdown of what it would need if you were trying to be competitive. Now, one important thing is I recently spoke to someone who actually competed um, in these and they told me one of the things that comes in is when a puzzle is submitted and I haven't looked, gone back and looked. But all that is, um, all, um, when you look, get the grids for these puzzles, it will show you either a, two rows, two columns, or a row and a column, similar to the way that its uh, answers are submitted in Logic Masters Germany, where you have to provide the digits. And they told me that when they were solving for these, they never completed a puzzle. As soon as they, what they would do is they would focus on getting the digits for that row and that column, or those two columns or those two rows. And as soon as they got those, they would stop because that's what they needed. So the goal in the competition, once again, is not to necessarily solve the puzzle fully logically because they're aiming for speed, not necessarily for accuracy. So if something is down to two options and they can quickly, they think it would be faster to try out the two options rather than to... Um, to uh, try and find the, what the logical solution is, they will go for the speedy option. And also, they won't. Um, he, the person I spoke to said that they never, ever finished a grid because as soon as they got to the point where they had the, say it was this row and this column, as soon as they had were able to prove this row and this column, they were done. That puzzle was complete. And that would mean that with some of the puzzles we've done where I've spoken about in previous packs where I've spoken about the puzzle felt more difficult than the points were worth, what they said is it's probably because the row and the column where they needed to get the answers for didn't actually involve any of the steps to complete the entire grid, which we found tricky because um, when they set them, the setters are bearing in mind of only solving for those particular rows and or columns. So these puzzles have very different requirements on them than we normally look at. And that's a really interesting concept to have. Bearing in mind all of that, I'm going to go into this now and go through the basics of how you solve a Sudoku. So this is very going to be such a slow one, slow video, even though this is going to be the easiest puzzle in the pack um, and go through in detail. So hopefully that was a bit of an interesting history lesson. I'm going to go through that pretty much at the start of every series. Um, but yes, um, and let's have a look at Classic Sudoku 1 um, from the 2020, uh, 2016 Round 4 
um, created by Andrei Bogdanov from Russia. So what do we have? This is a classic Sudoku. So normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. So they're the rules of the puzzle. I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer, but I'm not going to be going for time. Otherwise, I would have started solving immediately. So there's a few things that we do when we're trying to solve Sudoku, and we can use different types of pencil marks. Also, when I'm solving to explain, I will often over pencil mark because it's easier to follow on screen. So for example, the first thing that's calling out to me is seven of the nine digits are already placed in column one. So these two digits have to be the two digits that haven't been placed. Now we've already got one, two, three, four, five. We don't have six and eight. So six and eight, I put here in um, center pencil marks. Now I could have put those in immediately because I can see the way those resolve. But if I'm solving on camera and I want people to be able to follow along, if I put pencil marks in the center like this, I can explain what center pencil marks are. The first thing is center pencil marks are where in these two particular cells, because we break up a Sudoku grid into different components. We break them into rows, into columns, and into boxes. But um, also these individual um, little squares are called cells. So this is a cell, this is a box, this is a row, and this is a column. Now, um, and we number them with row one, row two, row three, row four, going, um, so going down. We number the columns left to right, column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. And we number the boxes in English reading order. So box one, box two, box three, box four, box five, box six, box seven, box eight, box nine. So this is in box seven. But these cells, because of the column, could only be six and eight. And a center pencil mark means that those are the only digits that can go into that cell. Cell. So I've noted that these um, two um, cells could only contain six and eight, but because of this six, this can't be a six. So that's the eight and that's the six. And the reason I'm over pencil marking is because it can make it easier to follow on screen. Now I can also see in box four, I've got seven of the nine digits. So these have to be from three and four. And the four here is telling me that's the three and that's the four. Okay, now I can possibly look at a few different places. I'm restricted to four digits here, four digits here, but I'm actually only restricted to three digits up here. So this is where I'd be tempted to pencil mark because these are from one, three, and four. Well, I can't put a one here and I can't put a four here. Now that actually hasn't allowed me to resolve those, but I do know that this has been a little bit restrictive. Okay, so maybe now what I want to do is look at these. So for example, I can see one can only go in one of those two cells because it can't go in any of those and I can't repeat one in the row. Now, what is that? Why am I putting one in the corner? Now, a corner pencil mark is a different sort of pencil mark than putting a digit into a center like this. What a corner pencil mark is stating is within this box, I have reproved, or I've, I'm noting that one can only go in one of those two cells. And normally with a classic Sudoku, I will only use a corner mark for in two cells for a, the particular type of digit. And the reason um, that you would do that is, for example, if I could prove that that is a one, I don't know, maybe it is, then that would eliminate one from here and I wouldn't need to rediscover one logic because as soon as I can remove one of these, I know the other one has to be a one without me having to rediscover it. I'm noting the deduction for future reference. But with ones being in one of those two cells, I know this can't be a one because if one is in one of those, that is taking up the position of the one in this row. So if I was to make this a one, I couldn't put one in any of those cells and this box would not contain a one, breaking the rules of Sudoku. So this is a pointing set of ones, meaning this cannot be a one and this becomes the one. These are now three and four. So what else can I do in this box? I need to put a three in this box, which has to be in one of those two. I have to put a six in this box, which has to be in one of those two. And here's where I could use the pencil marks quite effectively, because three and six have to be in here, which means I can't put three, six in any of these cells. So three and six can be center marked into these cells because I can't put three or six anywhere else. These are the only two cells that can take the three, six. So these are the only places that can take the three, six and I can remove the corner marks, but I just removed a corner marked one, which means that has to be the one. Um, didn't know that was coming, but it is a nice proof of how this works. And now the only digit that can left for the box is the eight.
And I'm possibly over explaining this, but I do want people who've never seen this before to understand what's going on. So now I can state what these three digits are as triples because I can't use three or six down here. And these are all six. Um, effectively, this is six given digits and this is six given digits, because while I don't know where the three and the six go, I know they're in those cells. So these must be one, not two, not three, not four, five, not six, seven, not eight, not nine. So these are one, five, seven. And now I could use the box to determine these are two, four, and nine. Well, two can't be in any of those. So this is the two. The nine looks across making that the four and that the nine. The five says this isn't the five. The five at the top says this isn't the five. So that's the five. And this is a one, seven pair. And I resolve a lot of the stuff on the left straight away. Okay. Now, Let's have a look here maybe and try the same thing. I need to put a one in here, but I don't see how to restrict that. I need to put a four in here, which now has to go in one of those, which of course means four can't go in any of those or there. So I can put the same corner marks of four in here. Uh, I need to put a seven in here, which I'm not sure about. And I need to put an eight in here, which is in one of those two. So this was a lot less effective. Okay, where do I want to look now? I could see five is in one of those two because of the fives looking up and that five looking across. I could see one is in one of those two because of the two ones looking across. I could see four is in one of those two because of these fours looking across. In fact, this is a one five pair because one and five, one and five. So one and five can't go in any of those. This is a one five pair, which is going to tell me what this pair is because it can't be one, can be two, can't be three, four, five, can be six, can't be seven, eight, nine. So this is two and six, and I'm starting to restrict what these can be. So these are now down to what we call a quadruple, four different digits, not one. I need to put a two in here, which now must go down here because this two and this two. So two is down here. Three has to go in here somewhere. And it's in one of those two, four, five. And I need to put six in here. And the six again is overlapping with the two. Two and six can't go in any of those cells because that's one, five, that's seven, eight, nine. And the two, six already sees those. So these are two and six meaning I can remove those quarter marks. These have to be three, four, but the three can't be here because I've rem or I just removed a three quarter mark. That's the three, that's the four. Now these are reduced to pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. These are seven and nine. The seven makes that the nine and that the seven. These are three and eight, and I'm not sure how to resolve that yet. But you can see how the flow works. Um, this one actually feels a little bit more tricky than a 15 point puzzle. It's possible I've missed some basic deductions while trying to do the explanation, and that's fine. Seven and seven, put seven in one of those two. Um, okay, what about this column maybe? No, I'm not sure. So what could this be? It can't be one, two, three, it can't be four, five, six. It can't be nine. So this is seven or eight only. Eight has to be down here somewhere, but I'm not seeing the restriction on that. Is this more restricted now? One, four, seven, eight. Oh, the four is looking down saying that's not the four. So that's the four because I removed one of the corner marks. And this is one, seven, eight. Well, this isn't the eight. And that is now a one, seven, eight triple which means that the 178 in this row is placed in those three cells. I don't know the order, but that's where they must be. So one, two, three, four, five, this is now a six because it, I can't put six in any of those cells. So this is the two, this is the six. Two and two means this is the two. Two and two means this is now a two, seven pair because the two has to go where the seven goes. Um, okay, what are these now? I have to put a three in one of those two. Okay. Now, this is a bit more advanced. I can see it, so I'm going to explain it, but it feels a little bit more advanced than a 15 point trick, but there we go. Um, so I can't put three in any of those cells because they're four, seven, and nine. I can't put three in any of those cells because the three in any of those cells um, would mean that both of those have to be four. So three can't be in any of those or any of those. So three is in one of those two. 
but I can't put three in any of those cells and I can't put three in any of those cells. So the three has to be up here, but the three has to be in one of those two. So if I put the three here, there's no three in this row. If I put the three here, there's no three in this row. Basically what I have is what's called an X-wing of threes here, because the threes have to be in one of those positions, knocking three out of all of those, because I can only put two threes in one three in each row, and there must be a three in one of those and a three in one of those, taking up the two threes that can go in two rows. But I've got the same here. There's only two threes in two columns, and there must be a three here and a three here, taking up the two threes that take these columns. So this can't be the three, and this is the three. Double overlapping X-wings feels a little bit tricky for a, for a, um, uh, a puzzle like this. And in fact, I could see a faster way of doing this. Where is seven in this column? Because that seven is saying seven couldn't be any of those. Those are filled. I could have written that seven in right at the start, which may allow this to be a one, which makes this a seven, which takes seven out of those, which means this is a seven. This is now down to a pair, one and three. And the one looks down, making that the three and that the one. That seven was way more powerful. I wouldn't have needed to have found that three, I think, if I found that seven. These are now four and eight. And well, the three looks up, making that the eight and that the three. The eight looks down, making that the four, that the eight. It's often when I'm explaining things in detail, it's very easy to miss stuff. I'm cool with this, as long as you're understanding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are six and eight. And the eight looks across, making that the six, making that the eight. The six looks back, making that the three, making that the six. The three looks all the way across, making that the four and that the three. Now I know what these did. Or I, I, I'll write this triple in, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are four, five, and nine, but five and four can't go there. So that's the nine, and this becomes a four, five, with the four looking across, making that the five and that the four. Now these are down to triples, but let's resolve some of this first. The seven looks up, making that the two and that the seven. The two looks down, making that the six and that the two. Uh, now let's look at these. One, two, three, four, five, six and eight have to go into those, but the six looks up making that the eight and that the six. The eight looks down making that the one and that the eight. The one looks up making that the five and that the one. These, I need to put a five in, but I can't put it there. So that's the five and this is the nine to finish the puzzle. Now that took me 12 minutes and 21 seconds, a palindromic time, but I think I went, I, I spent a lot of time explaining this and I missed that seven which I think was probably the key to speed solving this. The other thing is, as I said, if you were speed solving this, um, you wouldn't have solved the entire grid. I only am curious about these as Sudoku puzzles, so I'm always going to solve the entire grid. If you're curious about trying to solve it as it would be in the competition, go to the World Puzzle Federation archive below and download the pack and try and solve it following the competition instructions listed there. But I'm just trying to solve these as puzzles. From now on in, I'm just going to go through, I'll give the point values of the puzzles. I'll refer back to this video if you want an explanation of how point videos, uh, point the point system works. And I'm not gonna repeat how basic pencil marks or anything works. But hopefully this was an interesting one for you, a longer video because of all the detail, but um, I think it's very, very useful. And I've received very positive feedback from people who are, um, new to the hobby or um, trying to learn how to solve Sudoku and feel overwhelmed by just, hang on, I don't understand what any of this means, that these introductory videos have been incredibly helpful to them. So I'm going to continue doing them when I do the first puzzles in these packs. Thank you everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoy the series. And as always, good luck with your solving.